Hey there, friends. Happy Good Friday to you. However you're celebrating this wonderful weekend, I hope that your celebrations will be awesome and spectacular. I've got a couple new journals ready to go into the shop today. I will be listing those these a little later this afternoon. This is a revisit. Remember, I was cleaning some fabric and found more of this, so it's always fun to play with this fabric. I really do dig like clocks and numbers and things like that. That. This is a fabric that uh, is reminiscent of the, the butterflies on white that we have sometimes. I like this because it's super simple. I like simple things. Um, simple colors, simple foods, simple, simple, simple. <laughs> I'm a simple girl. And I finished this off very simply with some sparkly glass beads and I think that they look real fine. Uh, match really nicely with the the moths and butterflies on this cover and I think it's more about the moths than the butterflies y'all we've got some super cool closures these are from Kathy sent along some new closures which was just awesome thank you Kathy let's take a look inside this book it, of course, is five signatures. We encourage you to tell your story. You know, it's spring. It's time for renewal and rejuvenation and rethinking and rebirth and re-re-re. It's all about re. <laughs> so it's a great time to reimagine your story and what is your story about and how would you change your story and just remember that story is what you create so create yourself a new story tell yourself a new tale nothing wrong with that at all we have a mystery lady stamped on this uh, signature insert for you inky papers I really am loving these Christmas cards they are merry and bright just like they say to me you could I mean, you could definitely cut out these elements and play with them in a flow journal or or in a mixed media journal whatever you want to do a thank you card for you guys some inspiration from a magazine I think this is a scrapbookers magazine I think is what it's called I love the Farmer's Almanac. You guys know how much I love Farmer's Almanac. This is some astronomical glossary and has apogee, celestial equator, celestial sphere, circumpolar. I like dictionaries. I like astronomy. I like the Farmer's Almanac. It's all these things. I also love these illustrations. The paper lends itself really well to decoupage. And I'll show you some things that I've been decoupaging with uh, with these kinds of papers. I like the definition of the Twilight Zone here. I love the Twilight Zone. I think that it was one of the best things that's ever been on TV. I remember watching it when I was a young child. These are, this is a mini pocket for you and I've got some bookmarks in here for you to play with. They look fine as they are. They're really pretty, but I know that you can, you can really jazz them up a bit. I know you, you can do great things. An envelope for you to play with. More inky papers. It is finally warm and I think, oh my goodness, I'm so ready to go downstairs and play with some inky papers. Also, my friend bought me, um, sent me a jelly plate and I'm very anxious to get started with that as well. You'll notice in this book I did some stamping. I had a new ink pad and I thought, well, that, it'll be a fun, uh, fun way to kind of test out the new ink pad and test out a few new stamps that I have as well. The second pocket is all about texture. I wanted to create something for you guys that um, allowed you to play with some textures. These these second inserts in, in these little books will have metal elements and wood, and you've got some metal elements in this envelope. I am out of keys, you guys, so I don't have any more keys for you to alter. But there are metal elements in this envelope for you to play with. There's a wooden element right here, a chipboard piece, 
This is a deli style paper, but I did mine by lining the desk downstairs that I use to do my inky papers with wax paper. And it just turned out so nicely and I, I really like the way it sounds. <laughs> I think it sounds super cool. I have some styrofoam in here for you to play with. Styrofoam is um, it's a wonderful textural element no matter how you use it. If you cut it into strips and put it on some mixed media and then slap some paint over it or molding paste over it or whatever you want to do, it is just, it's a lot of fun to take this styrofoam and carve into it just with an ink pen and you can create your own stamp. I love styrofoam. I do buy eggs in styrofoam cartons just so I can recycle the styrofoam. And we are lucky because our recycling does take styrofoam. So I can, I, I sit, 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 sit up here in the studio and then I can recycle the rest of it. We've got a napkin for you to play with, some tissue paper. This is Tim Holtz Grunge Board. A wonderful substrate just lots of fun with with this kind of grunge board it's sort of a mix between cardboard and fabric almost it's very different this is a piece of gloss photo paper for you to play with I did uh, I do tie-dyed bookmarks with my gloss photo paper lots of fun a bit of bubble wrap. Uh, if you've never used bubble wrap on an ink pad, you know, inked up some bubble wrap and had some fun with circles, you're going to have a blast with this. I also really do like corrugated cardboard. I like corrugated cardboard for applying uh, molding paste, applying paint, applying all kinds of things. And then the cool thing about cardboard is that you can turn it on its side and use it as a scraper. So lots of uses there. Um, got you some Prima flowers. These are fun to uh, glue down to a surface and then go back over them with paint or gesso or whatever you want to use. Got some bling for you as well. I love this stamp, my star stamp. I'm kind of in love with it. And the whole time I was using it in this book, I was I was telling myself, hey, don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Because <laughs> I feel like I gotta use it on every single page. This is another small kit for you guys to play with. This is an ATC kit. If you are just kind of in a funk or you don't want to drag out all your supplies, you can pluck out this little envelope and and it has plenty of stuff for you to play with in here. It has ATCs, it has some fabric scrap, stickers, uh, papers, all kinds of things. So I know that you'll have a lot of fun with that. We are to our third signature now. See, I was really having fun with stamp, y'all. Uh, this one says time flies. I really do like that one. And time really does fly, you know, it's, it's, it's almost April. It's just hard to believe that it's almost April. 1983 Country Living Magazine. I like that this was cutting edge in 1983. My sister just had her kitchen redone and I'm like, wow, I'm not sure I can cook on that stove. It looks really complicated. But this is a sweet little advertisement from Country Living Magazine. You know, I do love myself a pretty kitchen, and this is a lovely kitchen. I really do like the um, the um, the hand towels and, and dish towels dishcloths there. I thought those were super cool. You know, when we were in 1983, stenciling on your wall was a big thing. Not so much now, but back then it sure was. I like the Country Living magazines, like I said, because it's a reflection of super old colonial style um, design and interior design mixed with the modern 1983 designs. Um, so it, it's just fun. I love this advertisement because it had a telephone and it's a general electric advertisement and they are encouraging you to talk on the telephone that you can give them a call, not an email. Don't shoot them a text or send them a message. You're going to call them on the telephone. I love it.
This is a little bit of travel for you from the great state of Tennessee. I loved it because it's, it's got a little bit of Knoxville in it. And it's got a story about Thunder Road. While moonshining was prevalent all along the White Lightning Trail before, during, and after Prohibition in the early 1900s, one particular route is famous for its role in getting the mountain spirits from the hills and hollers and into the hands of customers. Today's highway 33 and 25 cover one of the heaviest traveled routes nicknamed Thunder Road for the loud low rumbles of the modified automobiles that raced around these curves in darkness. Isn't that just really really neat? I love I love lore. You know I love folklore. I love a good story. Just uh, really cool. I've been to Knoxville. I've been to Nashville. Um, I've been to Maryville, Tennessee, all wonderful and fine places. I really did enjoy always going to Tennessee. It was a lot of fun. And we are almost done with this signature. I did, again, stamp a crown there. I just thought that was really fitting in this little journal. So we are to our third signature is about writing and writers. We've got some Emily Dickinson for you. Sleep is supposed to be by souls of sanity, the shutting of the eye. Sleep is the station grand, down which on either hand the hosts of witness stand. Morn is supposed to be by people of degree, the breaking of the day. Oh, 1858. Just really don't think anybody I love Emily Dickinson. She was so simple, so succinct, so imagery provoking. I just, I love Emily Dickinson. This is a little page from a, the big volume of Shakespeare, and I love the illustrations here. I also love the paper because it's very tissue paper-ish. Um, this is from the book Unto the Hills. A little bit of Inspector Poirot. I love the yellow of this paper. In a non-smoking carriage, Miss Emily Brent sat very upright, as was her custom. She was 65, and she did not approve of lounging. Her father, a colonel of the old school, had been particular about deportment. The present generation was shamelessly lax in their carriage and in every other way. Enveloped in an aura of righteousness and unyielding principles, Miss Brent sat in her crowded third-class carriage and triumphed over its discomfort and its heat. Everyone made such a fuss over things nowadays. I love Emily Brent. She is, this is from A uh, Holiday for Murder. Uh, of course, by the marvelous Agatha Christie. We have a little bit of, Gail sent us some coffee dyed index cards. Love it. She's got, it, it almost looks like a horizon here with trees on it. I don't know how she does that. It's very, very sweet and beautiful, and it's very nice of her to share with us. Uh, Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. So we have a little bit of text from that. Alice in Wonderland, because we just kind of love Alice because it is funky and cool and still relevant to this day. Got a dragon here for you. Reader James Bethune thinks there is a satirical significance in the griffins sleeping. I'm sorry, I call griffin a dragon. Griffins were supposed to guard fiercely the gold mines of ancient Scythia, and this led to their becoming heraldic emblems of extreme vigilance. See Ann Clark's article, The Griffin and the Griffin, in Jabberwocky, winter 1977. Very cool. More Tale of Two Cities. I found some fun paper, y'all. Isn't that just bright and pretty? Doesn't that just say spring? Mmm. It was 68 degrees here today. I'm sorry, I was distracted by Emily Dickinson. I could just sit and just read it all day long. Inky papers for you. I kind of like my candelabra stamp. 
Isn't that neat? We've got some Nielsen ephemera from 1946. This is from the Aldell's DIY, the 1960 book about DIY your kitchen, DIY your house. This is about um, repairing your furniture, not chucking your furniture, not throwing your furniture away, repairing your furniture. Gosh, things have really changed, haven't they? This is a wonderful baby food advertisement. Claps baby food. I really did like the little piggy bank up here. Um, this is from the 1962 Family Circle magazine. 1942 Red Cross, Red Cross Home Nursing Manual. This is about milk and conferences for mothers and children. I thought that went really nice with the baby food advertisement from the 1962 Family Circle. We've got two vintage, vintage Christmas cards in here for you. Never a Christmas morning, never the old year ends, but somebody thinks of someone, old days, old times, old friends. Best wishes for Christmas in the year ahead. Ruth Farr, RM, Gordon Smith, RP, King Court, number three, O of A. I have no idea what any of that is. If anybody has um, an idea of what all of these things stand for, I would really love to to know. This the first greeting card is signed by the Jerry Greniers. Very nice. We did some salvage script saving right there. This is from the 1956 50 things for kids to do. It's about, um, the first part of it was about codes, and then we had some semaphores, and now this is how to point to things in the wild. Um, grass pointing to the left means turn left, stick pointing left, danger help, three stones, one on top of the other means help. Three bunches of grass tied together means help. Three straight sticks in a row means help. We're not going to message somebody that we need help. We're going to tie some grass together or stack some stones, man. <laughs> Don't you love that? All right, guys. This little beauty will go in the store a little bit later on this afternoon. Got lots and lots of hairy paper clips and fibers up here for you to have fun with. Again, we're just revisiting our clock fabric. I just really dig this clock fabric. And I found one more swatch, so we might have one more tiny book <laughs> coming from this fabric. It's finished with a smattering of sparkly, um, sparkly beads and some mirrored pieces that I thought were super cool. And I've been using these square beads, which are really neat. You just don't see square beads very often. This is, uh, the closure is the number 29 from the Tim Holtz Countdown Brads that we have. So we will take a look inside. A little bit of, this was graphic 45 paper. I thought it was so pretty. It was education paper, really cute. And your storybook is right here. Your storybook was kind of big, so I sat it on its side. You know, again, rejuvenation, renewal. It's spring, aren't we happy? Um, our bird element features some eggs on a tissue, a napkin, so you can play with that. The birds are sparrows. I'm not sure what these are. I love these illustrations, the black and white illustrations. This is from a, a book about birds of Indiana. I thought it was really super cool. Our Farmer's Almanac, this time April 2017. Light comes upon the earth in radiant showers and mingling rainbows play among the flowers. Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. Sing me a song of idle days when spring is queen over woods and ways. Oh, I heard something really interesting on the radio yesterday. This is a 1962 Family Circle magazine about African violets. I just thought the illustrations were just incredible. Also, the paper is just wonderful. And, of course, there's a lot of text on the back of this full-size piece of paper for you to play with. Um, more of Gail's uh, index cards. Uh, 
coffee dyed index cards. And we've got a little bit of coffee um, quotes for you. I would rather suffer with coffee than be senseless. Napoleon. Oh, radio. I was listening to the radio yesterday. And uh, the commentator was talking about, uh, now I, I listen to inspirational radio in my car. And the, uh, the DJ was talking about being buried. And I thought it was very um, apt for this time of year, appropriate. Um, how sometimes we feel buried in life. Uh, you know, we're, we're buried by our regrets. We're buried by our sorrows. We're buried by financial problems, uh, physical problems, disabilities. But she, um, she made this incredible point. She said that sometimes when you feel like you're buried, maybe you're planted like a seed, like you're going to be reborn into something different and experience things in a different way. I just, that really resonated with me. I, um, I often feel overwhelmed. I think we all do, especially for girl people. You know, we're really overwhelmed all the time. But, you know, instead of feeling buried, feel like you're planted. You know, feel like you're being nurtured by the earth, that you're being nurtured by the beauty that surrounds us right now. Instead of feeling buried, feel nurtured. Feel nurtured and make yourself some posies. Make yourself some pretty posies. There's a whole pack of posies right here for you to create with. <laughs> I knew you would like that. More pretty papers, y'all. This is our... Um, this is our texture section, okay? So it's going to have the, um, the handmade deli paper, a wooden element, some styrofoam, Tim Holtz scrunch board, tissue paper, a napkin, some bling, some cardboard, little Prima flowers for you to play with. Maybe you need a surface to play with, so you can alter these cards right here. Um, lots of things to consider as far as um, texture. I like texture. Uh, there are your metal elements are in this little envelope. So you have a metal um, have metal numbers and a couple of metallic pieces as well. I love our kitty and our little book and I thought it went really well with the educational piece that we have here. Telling time. The children in Miss Hilton's room, Miss Hill's room, like to play with their toy clock. They made the clock show the time when they got up each day. They made it show when they did other things too. A sweet little poem. Lots of pretty papers. 1962 Family Journal. It's cold hands, warm heart weather. The chill in the air makes it all the pleasanter to share your hearth and home. We've been thinking up ideas to help you make sharing fun and easy. And this is a recipe for a sweetheart cake. I believe this is Miss Betty Crocker right here. And of course, if we're talking about Cakes. Then we're talking about kitchens, and this is from the 1960 Adele's DIY book. This is a modern 1960s kitchen. Love the illustrations, love the paper. 1983 Country Living Magazine. This had an article about the value of seed cartons, you know, seed boxes, seed envelopes. Really, they were incredible works of art. Which makes me want to go to the barn at the farm <laughs> and see what I could dig up. <laughs> I know there's some stuff up there. Um, the farm that I work for is a hundred year old plus family farming enterprise. And I just, the history of it is just fascinating to me. And every year I've worked for them for five years, and every year I learn something new and different and fun. This is some super cool text, again from the 1983 Country Living Magazine. The 1956 50 Things for Boys and Girls to Do. We're going to talk some semaphores and how to make flags in here. 
Crazy what kids used to do. What did you used to do? Do you I will tell you a big thing for me to do in the in the summertime was uh, and I probably told you this before, my friend Ellen and I would walk downtown by ourselves with no cell phone or anything. We'd walk downtown, we would go to the five and dime, and we would get ourselves an embroidery kit. And that is how we passed our summers. We did some, we did embroidery and it was a lot of fun. We also watched our neighbor uh, work on his car. He had a Mach 1 Mustang. Also, there was always something car related going on on our street. You know, somebody was buying a car, somebody was washing a car, somebody was working on a car. Um, so <laughs> we just... That's how we spent our summers. Hey, Ellen. <laughs> oh, we used to have the best time. I love that Alice in Wonderland. These wonderful Peter Newell illustrations are just awesome. This book has, of course, lots of numbers for you to play with. A Tale of Two Cities. This is Chapter 4, The Preparation. Some awesome Shakespeare for you. I think this is Love's Labor Lost. Loves labors lost. Uh, again, the illustrations are incredible. The paper is almost like tissue paper. Unto the Hills, some more Inspector Poirot. I think this is, oh yeah, I told you guys this. This was Holiday for Murder. I like this great big five. I can't believe I found these things. I've had them for years and I just think they're super cool. Even if you just tear it apart and use the paper. Lots of fun. A wonderful little pocket uh, with some Emily Dickinson in it. This is 1932. Her writings from 1932. Y'all, this is a pocket uh, that you can just take out and play with. Uh, a take and play pocket. It has tickets. It has some tiny tags and these super cool border strips that I can't even describe. They are just the neatest things. They're a little bit fiddly, which is why I put them in a package for you. Um, but they're worth the fiddly because they're a lot of fun to play with. Archaic papers, a timesheet. Um, this is the, um, the real version of QuickBooks. I like to say that. <laughs> You heard my story about the stubby pencil method of bookkeeping that I use. A little bit from a 1972 reference book. Also a 1972 teacher's guide. These are our vintage cards. One is a Santa Claus that says Merry Christmas. He looks so jovial. And a sweet little Christmas scene with a nice fire. The Christmas tree is lovely because it's lit by candles. Very pretty. Within this house on Christmas night, the Christmas tree is all alight. Upon the hearth, the embers glow. From all our hearts, good wishes flow. And this is signed May Green. The first card is signed to Georgie. The snowman comes to you today with something nice he wants to say. Hope Christmas Day is fun for you and hope your New Year's happy too. Much love from Grammy Winnie and Muriel. I love those vintage cards. They really say a million things, don't they? That's big time history right there, y'all. And more inky papers and papers to play with in the back of this book. I'll have these in the shop this afternoon, y'all. So keep a weathered eye, as Jack Sparrow would say. Have a lovely, lovely Easter and a beautiful, beautiful Good Friday. Remember, we're not buried. We're planted. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.